Okay, let's talk about big tech and abortions. What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the impact of big tech on how it is affecting the current ruling by the Supreme Court on abortions. We're not here to debate whether you support abortions or not. We're just here to talk about how big tech may become an intricate part of the overall discussion moving forward since the Supreme Court has deemed that abortion rights are not constitutional rights. But before we get into all that, make sure you hit the like button, share button, and also subscribe to this channel. And also, if you're out there trying to kickstart your career in IT and cybersecurity, I highly encourage you to subscribe to a membership on this channel. In that membership, I teach four IT classes, IT Fundamentals, A+, Network+, and Security+, Plus, all of those certifications, which are guaranteed to help you launch a career in IT. All right, with that being said, let's check out what in the world is going on with big tech and abortions. The article says, tech companies may surrender abortion related data so like i stated earlier the supreme court recently handed out a ruling stating that abortion rights are not constitutional rights and that has prompted at least half the states in the country to either restrict abortions or severely limit access to abortions and with that being said there are some states out there that are possibly seeking to implement legal consequences for those who choose to get an abortion and we're going to see how big tech may actually tie into all of this Article says, when law enforcement authorities demand personal data belonging to those suspected of getting an abortion, tech firms will likely hand it over. Why it matters. Companies like Google and Facebook collect enormous volumes of personal data, including information about where we've been, what we've bought, who we talked to, and what we've said. States that have made abortion a crime are making anyone who miscarries a potential target for a police data demand. Says the big picture, the companies aren't directly answering questions about how they will respond to such inquiries now that the U.S. Supreme Court is letting states outlaw abortion. Yes, but the firm's privacy policies and past conduct answer the question clearly. They may contest what they view as overly broad data requests, but generally they will cooperate with criminal investigations. So if there's a state out there that is really adamant about tracking who is getting abortions that have been deemed illegal in certain states, basically these states may actually request this data from the big tech companies to see who has been talking about it, who's been researching what, and then they might use this information to possibly bring charges about to that woman. It says, what's at stake? Period tracking apps have drawn attention for obvious reasons, but the potentially relevant data is far wider. Everything from Amazon purchase data to Google search queries and location data from cell carriers to message data from email and chat providers. So wow, they might possibly try to dig into everything. Even if you just make mention of the word abortion, you might pop up on somebody's radar in a state where where abortion has been deemed illegal or severely restricted. That's what this sounds like to me. It says how it works. Law enforcement already seeks access to location data, content, usernames, browser history, and other online activity from tech companies through warrants or subpoenas. Now they will seek that same information in connection with abortion investigations in states that have criminalized it. The big tech platforms haven't rushed to clarify how they will handle legal requests related to abortion prosecutions since the Dobbs decision on Friday. There was similarly silent when Axios posed a question after a draft ruling leaked in May. But policies for the companies, including Apple, Google, and Meta, clearly lay out how they handle such data requests. It says, like other technology and communication companies, Google regularly receives requests from governments and courts around the world to disclose user data. The company says in its privacy policy, our legal team reviews each and every request, regardless of type, and we frequently push back when a request appears to be overly broad or does not follow the correct process. There are a couple of reasons that companies are unlikely to confirm their plans and procedures. The questions remain largely hypothetical for the moment. And there isn't much to be gained from tipping their hands. Also, no company wants to prompt a headline saying that it intends to hand over personal data. So just think about the backlash that would come back if Apple 
Facebook, Google, TikTok, or whoever, they publicly declared that they are willing to hand over this information to law enforcement to keep tabs on those who are seeking abortions that have been deemed illegal in certain states. Man, if you thought things are getting ugly now with this abortion debate, just imagine what would happen if these companies publicly came out and admitted that they are in support of turning over this information. Law enforcement does not necessarily need a warrant to obtain some online information because it is sold by data brokers. So in case you guys don't recall, remember when Andrew Yang was running for president and he was talking about UBI, how he wanted to pay every American $1,000 and people were asking, well, how are you going to afford paying every American $1,000? One thing Andrew Yang was talking about was putting a tax on big tech companies because big tech companies, they make billions and billions of dollars for selling our personal information, which is then sold off to advertisers. And that's how you end up with all these wonderful ads popping up all over the place, advertising something that you literally just thought about two seconds ago in your head. I mean, it's almost like they can read your mind. As a matter of fact, as of recently, I put in a request to have somebody come to my house and give me an estimate on solar panels. And every time I log into a social media site, I get bombarded with ads from solar panel companies. So that's just kind of how this works, y'all. It says, even though the government could get a court order or a subpoena or a warrant to access data, at the moment, there are so many different channels for it to do so without going through the legal process. The post row world, will drive every tech company to review the volume of data they are collecting and ask whether they need it, how it could be harmful, and how long they want to hold it. It says data minimization, already a trend and a principle espoused in the EU or the European Union because all the more important in the context of an increased volume of government requests aimed at enforcing laws that are opposed by a majority of the population. Apple has been the loudest advocate amongst large tech companies for limiting its own access to customer data. Google, which relies much more on data-driven ads has also taken significant steps in recent years to make it easier to delete certain data. As long as the companies are collecting that data and storing that data, they're going to keep getting subpoenaed. And here's another twist. So without clear standards for personal control of data, many people will simply delete period tracking apps or think twice about seeking out health information online. At the moment that the change in laws make access to reliable personal health data more urgent than ever. It says, I think that people may cut themselves off from access to important reproductive health information that they need because of these privacy concerns, stated Chen. So what's next? So activists are encouraging tech companies to take a fresh look at products they have in development to imagine the types of data they might generate and how that data could be used against a customer's interest by an intrusive government. Since privacy is a time shifted risk, meaning what is convenient and risk free today can have devastating consequences consequences tomorrow. We should design the technologies we depend on in ways that protect us no matter the political climate. All right, so there you have it, folks. Once again, this video is not about whether or not you support abortions or not. That is not the purpose of this video. So I'm not interested in reading your comments if you decide to leave some telling me your stance as to why you support abortion or why you are anti-abortion. This video is about how big tech may potentially play a role in abortion as it relates directly to those states that have deemed abortion illegal legal are those states that have severely restricted access to abortions. Because one thing about big tech, it doesn't matter what you're doing online, whether you're just looking up something on Amazon, Facebook, Google, YouTube, whatever, they are keeping tabs on everything that you do. You may go in there and think that you're being sneaky, going in incognito mode or using a browser like DuckDuckGo, but I guarantee somebody is keeping tabs on what you're looking at. If somebody or some organization or some government entity wants to really figure out what it is that you're looking at, there are ways they can get access to that money, whether or not they go directly to the company or they go to the companies that purchase this data so that they can push ads onto you in some form or fashion. So that is what's happening out here. So once again, we're not here to debate whether or not you support abortions or not. That is not the purpose of this video. I'm just simply here to inform you about how big tech may play a significant role 
role in this abortion debate moving forward, especially as it relates to those states that have severely restricted access to abortions or have just flat out deemed abortion illegal. That is what the purpose of this video is. Now, with that being said, be sure to hit the like button, share button, drop a comment. Also, go sign up for a membership where I'm teaching people entry level IT to help you guys kick off a career in cybersecurity. All right. With that, I will holler at you on the next video. Peace.